It is absolutely possible to add solar to your RV without drilling into the roof. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So this video is almost two years in the making because when I first attempted this, I had no clue if this was actually going to work or not. However, I can now report that after about four, maybe 5,000 miles of travel in the RV, this will absolutely work for attaching solar panels to the roof of your RV without having to drill into the RV itself. You see, I just don't like the idea of putting new holes in the roof of my RV. So a couple of years ago, I decided to buy one of these flexible 100 watt solar panels off of Amazon and see if I could actually attach it to the roof, basically glue it down. Now I could have went a couple of different ways with this. I could have possibly went with something called a turnabon tape and taped these down, but I chose not to do that. What I actually chose to use was some RV roof sealant. This stuff comes out of a uh, caulk tube and you can spread it around. It's self-leveling and once it dries, it's very stable. Again, I've traveled almost 5,000 miles with this setup with the original panel that I put down two years ago and I've had zero issues. So after having that many miles on the road, I am confident that this is going to work for this new panel install as well. So really all I had to do was put the panel up on the roof and weight it down. There is some curvature to the roof of the RV, so I did need to add some weights to it to make the solar panel conform to the roof itself. Then I simply took that RV uh, roof sealant and went around the vast majority of the solar panel. In fact, I did a couple of beads at the uh, front edge or the leading edge, which will be taking the most wind. That's one thing you definitely want to make sure you do is get plenty on that leading edge of that solar panel. However, be cautious. Don't let the uh, sealant get over into the, uh, the actual solar surface itself. If you do that, you're going to start reducing the capacity of your solar panel, but they all have a pretty good edge around them that is designed for mounting these panels without interfering with the solar cells themselves. So I went around uh, about 90% of my panel with this roof sealant. Now on the back side or the downwind side of the installation, I did leave about a eight inch strip that had no caulk on it. And the purpose for that, and I did this exact same thing on the first one that I mounted this way. The purpose of that is to allow any water that gets under that panel to evaporate out from underneath it. The last thing you want is water trapped between a solar panel and the roof of your RV. And this goes for condensation as well. I just didn't want any possibility of water being trapped between those two surfaces. So I did leave that eight inch section free of the roof sealant to give that water a way to escape. So this brings my total solar collection up on the top to 390 watts. So I've added an additional 100 watts to this this time around. Now, let's take a look at how I'm going to feed 200 more watts into the side of the RV. So in addition to the new panel that I just put up on the top, Rofi reached out and asked if I wanted to check out this 200 watt panel that you see sitting on the ground in front of you. And it measures roughly two feet by two feet when it's completely collapsed. Now I should also mention that this panel is IP65 rated, so leaving it out during a rain shower is not going to be an issue. Now you're not going to be backpacking with this thing, well probably not anyway. It comes in at about 13 and a half pounds, but this is very well suited for RV travel and it will give me an additional 200 watts uh, above and beyond what's on the roof 
and we're going to feed that into this solar on the side connector right here. Now this connector runs direct to the battery, so it doesn't run through my primary charge controller, so that means we need another charge controller to go with it. Now I haven't finished the installation on this, I'm still trying to make up my mind on a couple of things. The primary reason I wanted this is, especially on those cloudy days, this just allows me to gather a little bit more sun uh, coming into the battery on the RV. Under cloudy conditions, I'm only going to get about one, maybe two amps of power out of this panel. Under full sun, I'm getting somewhere around seven to eight amps out of it. So again, that's in addition to what's already on the roof. But we're going to utilize this compartment right here. I have an MPPT solar charge controller that I have picked up. I've only got some basic wiring done. The nice thing about this controller is it has a barrel connector input for the solar panel and this solar panel already has the correct barrel connector on it uh, to feed into this particular charge controller. The pigtail you see coming out, I've got a cable that will go from here to this solar on the side port. I've also kind of been taking a look inside of this panel, or inside of this compartment rather, and right behind the divider right here, I can actually access the back side of this wire. So I may just go ahead and hardwire this into this solar on the side port. That would allow this to uh, remain open, and then I can use this with any 12-volt accessories that I have around camp. So if I want to plug an air compressor in, or even if I want to plug a radio in and run it from the outside, you can do that with this port. So now with the addition of that panel fed into the solar on the side port, I've got almost 600 watts of solar power on the RV. I probably need to upgrade the battery next. The nice thing about having that solar on the side panel is even if we're parked in the shade to keep the RV a little bit cooler in the summer, I can pull that 200 watt panel out into the sun and be able to collect 200 watts of solar even while we're keeping the RV cooler utilizing that shade. So hopefully this is going to give me plenty of solar power on the top. And the next thing I can focus on is moving from that 100 amp hour battery that's currently on it to a 200 amp hour battery. That's about all I can fit in the battery box up on the front of the RV. If I wanted to go with more battery power than that, I would have to start looking at taking up some of the limited storage space I have uh, in the RV, basically in the belly of the RV, and I really don't want to do that. It's such a small RV that we already have very limited space, and I just hate to eat that up with additional batteries. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.